Hello, my name is Sandra and I'm going to show you today how I make these little pumpkin faces. I have the wool here, which I need for today, but we also have a full kit available at the Irish Fiber Crafter with needles and string and colored wool and plain white wool. So everything you need to make at least six small pumpkins or you can make three medium pumpkins or you make one huge pumpkin. So I'm going to get started now. I want to show you first how we make the base for it. And for this I'm using the white wool. So it's all hand carded and it's washed, it's all local wool by the way, so you have one butt. And I'm going to divide it. To divide a butt, go with your hands in and separate it in the middle, poke a hole and go gently to the top and to the bottom. So you have two parts. And I'm also taking a little bit off for the eyes and maybe a tooth or two, let me see. You won't need very much, just a little bit. So I put this to the side. Now, to make the ball or the pumpkin, you starting to roll it up and you're starting at one end, bringing the sides a little bit in and roll it up. You don't have to do it too tight as we want to get sections in it. So I'm going to make a medium sized one. So I'm using, I'm using the, I'm using a bit more. So bring the sides in. And the fringy bit, flip that over as good as you can. And this bit, that's the first one which you poke with your needle in to secure that. So just the wispy ends, try to secure them and then everything what is standing up, all the edges. I hope you can see that. This all will be covered with colored wool as well. It's just for having the base layer. In the kit, there are included three felting needles. One is a coarse, one is a medium, and one is a twisted all rounder. It's the same what I'm using here, but I also use the multi-tool and you can get it at the Fiber Crafter as well. So, I'm quite happy with that. So the next step is to put a string around to separate, not separate, but to make sections. It's quite good if you have a second person for this as you have to make a knot. So I'm trying to do six sections, okay? Going around. Doing another knot up here. Okay. 
So this is holding your pumpkin together, but it also gives you a bit of an indication. I'm going to snip the bits off. So now you're going with your, you're looking at your pumpkin and you decide where you want to have your face. If you want the face, you don't have to put a face in, you can put everywhere the main collar in. But I think I'm using that big part, the big section as the face. And that's the only one where I'm going with the needle slightly over to make it a little bit firmer because it's, it's still very soft, everything. But the rest gets firm when you put the top collar on. And you don't have to make it completely solid. It's just, just a little bit firmer than the rest. So now we're going, the next step is the top collar. You have the choice because you got so much in that bag. You can use whatever. I'm going very classically with the orange. So. Just unroll it, spread it out. And divide it like we did the white one. So now the way I'm doing it, I'm just holding one end and tearing on the other. So you got a nice bit of yeah, a nice bit of wool in your hand to work with. And um, I leave the face free. I'm just going now the first section I'm going to cover. So the way I'm doing it, I'm holding it I'm going first at the top with my needle, secure that, hook it in. And then I'm doing the bottom. And now I'm going along the sides and you can stretch it a bit over and bring it really right into where the string is going. So this takes now a little bit time. Um, you don't want to have it solid, but you do need to work on it. If you have somewhere a bold spot like here or here, you just take another little strand of wool and put it over. Like so. So I'm going to use my multi tool because I have two needles in there and it goes just twice as quick. <laughs> So when you have the sides and the top and the bottom secured, you can go in the middle. 
but you still want to have that bit of curve in it so that's why I'm always starting first top bottom and the sides and have that a bit curved up So now you're going with your wool in all the sections, every section except the front. So when you're around, um, then it's time to check everything again, poke a bit more and take your time for that. Uh, that fill the gaps if you want to. And um, you do not have to be, you, you don't have to worry if you see the string here because we probably put another little bit of colored wool over it, which could look quite nice. Um, but just take your time, go around and tidy it nicely up and then the next step is the face. Okay, I will do at the end more work on it, but at the moment I'm happy with the shape and the layout. So the face will be all shapes, different shapes, and we will start with the nose because that's always the main thing. And then you do your eyes and lips and wrinkles. So I'm getting my little felting pad. A felting pad is not included in the kit but you can take a old either a foam like the most needle felt I use or a little bit of an old piece of felt something solid where that will do. I just have my old coat sewed up and filled with rice corns. I find it really good. So just want to show you again. So we're doing first the nose and I might use a different color of wool now. Yeah, I will. So I do the face in this color. Complete. Now you will only need small amounts of wool, so just divide it. That you, that you can easily work with it. So the nose, I think I just do a button nose. So and in order to do this, you just 
pull that little strand up. And then you think when you have the feeling it's big enough in your fingers, then you just take the rest of the wool off. But I think I can use that whole strand. So roll it like a little ball, but still have a fringy edge to attach it. So the nose is going right in the middle. And you just tuck it on first of all because there's so much more coming and sometimes it's not the right size you have to make it bigger normally you don't have to make it smaller most time it's putting more wool on top but I think that's okay so what I'm doing next is the mouth and um, I'm doing an upper lip and a down lip and I also put a little bit brown darker wool in the middle and I just show you on this one it just gives it a bit of depth if you can see that there and you could even put teeth in if you want to so I'm grabbing a bit of the brown wool don't need much. And we will need a tiny chin as well which I'm going again with this wool and it's just a small ball or a small sausage however it's just that you can attach later on the lip on something So for the lip, you're taking a little bit of wool, now you will lay it out and I might need a bit more. So what you're going for one of the lips is lay it out that way and draw a middle line with your needle. And you flip one side over and you draw again a line. I'm trying to lift it off gently and put it around. So that would be one lip now and I think that will be the upper lip. So the way I'm attaching it now, I'm splitting the middle and then I'm setting it under the nose like this. I hope you can see that and I'm just tucking it in.
now I'm going to do the other lip. So you just tuck it on and then you can play a bit around and see what, which way you like it the best. It looks like a bit mm. like a frog, but I see. So for instance, if you want to have you can do that now. You can have a strange angle in his mouth or you can make him smile by bringing both of the sides up. It's completely, it's great for playing around. It's completely up to you. They're quite fun to make. And you could spend hours on them. I think I will leave his mouth like that, like he's saying something. So I'm going to do the eyeballs now and then I'm doing the lids afterwards. So the best is if you take two even parts of wool and they might be too big but uh, we see and you roll them up yeah they're too big so I'm taking the rest of So they're still quite big but they will felt a bit more down and take a pumpkin and the best is to make a little indicator where you want your eyes I want to have them quite close down so I'm making first a little dent where I put them in and then you just secure them
and go on the outside, go around to bring that in. I know it looks really scary at the moment, but it will change. And it's Halloween. Wow. Woo. So he's almost finished. No, he's not. But, uh, I'm doing the eyelids now and then it will completely change. It will completely change his face. Eyelids are similar to the lips. You're just um, folding them over. And I advise again, do even parts that you get even eyelids. first one. That's it. It's not enough. Ooh. So now going to position them. So I'm really going almost over the eye, but it will open up again. So don't worry. So secure one side, secure the other side. And the same with the second eyelid. secure the top. Now, we doing the second eyelids. And then he's almost good looking. And this is not too complicated, it's just all shapes, different shapes, which you put together. And um, yeah. That's a 
lot here. Take a bit off. It's a bit fiddly now. I'd be closing his eye for a moment. He's going to sleep now. Now you just bring all the wool down and you can see if you want to have them further open or more closed. You can all change it at the moment, you know, it's not too secure on and um, yeah, it's actually great fun to do them because they're quite, you get some character into them. And then all of a sudden they remind you on somebody, <laughs> you know. If you have a lot of excess wool here, you could actually do straight away some kind of um, cheeks. Like so, or you just bring it straight down and put another cushion and I show you how to do them on top of that. So just fold your wool down.
So I'm putting pupils in and then he won't look that scary anymore with these white eyes. So in every kit there's some brown wool and you really you don't need much. So again divide it in two. Take a small amount because I don't think they need much. these two it's plenty and what I'm going I'm folding it in so that it is like a little disc like so if you can see that so I leave one here it's a bit hard to see on the black background it's good to see against my hand so I have two of them and you're going and you're opening his eye and you put it in there <laughs> try to fill that in and just secure around the outside don't go straight in the middle And then you, by drawing that circle, you get it quite nicely round shaped. And then you can very slightly go in the middle as well. And again, put the lids out of the way and really very shallow at the moment, just in case if you're not happy. Not doing much more I just put two little reflections in with a bit of white wool and that's really tiny tiny bits really small just two really small bits and then I look a bit more alive Now, you could do some nostrils and you just go with your coarser needle 
and poke two holes. And there again you could go with brown wool in there. And just give it a bit depth. So, and also if you want to bridge, you just do another. You can do that on a skewer as well. That's how I normally do the cheeks then. But I show you quickly with the bridge. So, I'm just taking a skewer, taking a little bit of wool and dropping it around. Not too tight, as I do want to felt it. So if I put it on now, then I have to cover it again with a bit wool up to get it all even out. I will leave that for the moment and I show you first the cheeks. So you take two even parts. There's a bit of vegetable matter in there. Full, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so take your skewer, hold your bowl in one hand and roll it up on the skewer. So go up and then try to go down again. So the, the wool will hold itself on it. So I'll be trying to do another one. Go up, go down, I mean, and then go up again. And that's a bit more, more wool, so it's a bit fatter. So, there are the two cheeks. Now, it depends how you want it. You could put them on like that, okay? But you have millions of choices. You could put also put them on when you want to make an old man. They have them a bit hanging down. So it's completely up to you. And you can make loads of them and put a lot of wrinkles on because it's a pumpkin. So I'm just going with one on each side and you can decide what you want to do. But it's always, it's the shapes, it's, it's very simple, easy and you can play around and see what you like most.
So if you secure everything nice and tightly, you go at the end to cover a little bit up the deep things, you just needle felt wool like that on. And then you have the shapes, but still it looks quite nice, a quite nice finish. So it's a bit like like we did the sections, but without covering the mouth or the eyes. It just gives you a nice finish. If you want to do more eyebrows here, it's the same. You're just making more shapes, attaching them on each side. And you either cover them up later on or you leave them like they are. It's completely up to everybody themselves. It's a great project to play around with shapes, faces. So you're going to needle felt everything down and then I show you how to make the stem. I'm quite happy with that fella. Even he has a big eye and a small eye. Okay. So now I did needle felt everything a bit down, put another shape on, put some eyebrows on. And I show you now how to attach and make the stem. Take some of your green wool, or if you want to use brown wool, that's fine too. And split it again in half. And the stem is pretty straightforward. Just take that bit off. So what I normally do, I just bring one small edge over, and you might just pin it Pin it down. Don't stab your finger. So and then you take that and you roll it. You roll that again up, like like with the most of the shapes we did, and try to really roll it tightly. And you have a little sausage so and you're bringing the ends secure the ends by poking in it and the, that will be the top so just go in there as well So felt it only three quarter of the way down because this bit we need to spread it out and attach it at the top of the pumpkin. If you do want to have a little curve in it, you just curve it while felting.
just watch your fingers whatever you do That's very short. You could make them longer. You can, you know, it's completely up to you. And then, I'll show you. You spread that a little bit out. And you attach it right at the top. And you're going with your felting needle around. Now you got the stem. We put a little belly button on. You don't have to, but I still have a little bit of brown, so I'm just putting that underneath here. Should have done that before. I put a stem on. Now you can attach some of the locks just around here and in the kit there's coming all different colored locks so you have 30 gram I think about 30 gram in that um, kit if you want to use them and to separate them always use start on the tip and get them out that you still have the lock structure intact. Take some orange, some burnt orange. And there's some blue faced Lester locks naturally dyed with logwood. I had to find the right word now, sorry. And a little bit green. So, if you have a small pumpkin and the locks are really long, you can do two things. You can attach them that way, poke them in here. I hope you can see that. And then just let them hang down. Or 
you just attach them like that. It depends, whatever you like to. Just poke them right into the base of the stem. That will help to secure the stem even more. And it's up to you if you want to go completely around or if you do just one tendril. I think they're called tendrils on the pumpkins itself. But feel free, whatever you want to do. It's good fun. So, you can attach a lot more if you want to. I just want to show you quickly one more thing if you like to do that. Um, remember the strings were underneath. So if you want to take some green and let it trail down, that looks quite nice. And it's not very complicated to do. Just take a strand and bring it down. Just use your needle so top bottom and then you go along the grain And they don't have to go all the way down, you know, even if they just trail a little bit off from the stem, it's, it's nice. is what you can do so with that kit you have at least enough wool to do three of them sizes or you do six small ones or you do one huge one and um, there's loads of possibility for instance this guy he's completely just out of wrinkles which I ordered on a skewer And he has one tooth and I put two little teeth in there. So that's a lot of possibilities you can do. 
and play around and just enjoy. Okay, that's it for me. I hope you have fun and I hope you make wonderful creations and I hope to see you soon. Bye!